a privilege. And I think the biggest challenge, of course, is going to be the five to seven minutes. (laughs) Y'all know me. Let's go ahead and pray. I can tell you this, that the presence of the Lord is so very strong in this house. And as we worshiped, the glory of the Lord just swept over this house. And do you understand that when that kind of presence, that kind of praise is in here, we are not alone. Not only is the presence of God here, but the angels are walking. They are drawn. Those angels that have healing on their wings, those angels that God has sent to minister to each and every one of us tonight. And I want to continue in that aspect as I speak tonight. Um, Recently, I was in the car with one of the sisters here at the church. And we were talking about many different things. And she actually, I think she knew she was ministering to me, but maybe she didn't. But she was. And we were talking about heaven. And, you know, the Bible tells us to encourage one another in talking about heaven. To constantly encourage one another. And and we're to not only do that, but even the closer we get, (laughs) our mind seems... Let me ask you a question. Have you ever been more homesick for a place you've never seen before than you are right now, quite possibly? Oh, what a beautiful place heaven is going to be. And she was telling me a story, and as she was telling me this story, this picture opened up in my mind. And and while I was driving, I was still able to see everything that the Lord was speaking through her. It was... She was talking of a man who had gone to heaven. And there he was in all the beauty and all the splendor. And the Lord took the man over to a closet, over to a door perhaps. And maybe it was a closet. And he opened that door. And inside this door, if you could imagine, were all these beautiful beautiful gifts. So think about Christmas. Think how excited your children are. Think how excited you are. Matt's very excited when he gets his gifts. But we're very excited, right? And so he opens this door, and there's the Lord with him, and he sees gifts of all different sizes, all different wrapping, all different shapes. And the man asks the Lord, well, what is this? And the Lord answers, these are your unclaimed gifts. I think that was a very sobering thought for me. Because as she told me this story, I could feel the sadness that the Lord may have felt at that thought. Think of someone that you love dearly. You've spent time picking out a specific gift. You've spent time wrapping that gift. You intended that gift for that individual My friends, the Lord has picked a specific gift for each and every one. My gift is for me. Mackenzie's gift is for her. Tomasa's gift is for her. They're very specific. They're very unique. And they will complement everything the Lord has for us and every purpose he has for us. We have only to claim it. Do you understand that in the Bible, 2 Timothy tells us that God does not give us a spirit of fear. That's one of our favorite verses to quote. Everyone in here can probably quote it. For God has not given us a spirit of fear, but of power and of love and of a sound mind. Okay, so if that is true, if that gift goes unclaimed, that power goes untapped. We have to make sure that we do not allow those gifts to sit up in heavenly places. Tonight, the power of God has come down in this house. And he has brought those gifts with us into this house. Do not let them go unclaimed. Do not let them go unclaimed tonight. It is so very important. He wants to give good gifts to his children, does he not? Recently, I was babysitting a little toddler, and we went outside, and the night sky is just ever so beautiful. It's just so beautiful. And I had him in my arms, and I looked up, and I said, look. I said, do you see the stars? And he just kind of looked at me. I said, no, 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 look up. Look at the stars. And he went, 
just with the wonderment of a child, he went, wow. And I said, aren't they beautiful? And he said, wow. And I said, he goes, moon. And I said, yes, moon. What if we took all those gifts, all those blessings that the Lord gives us, and we actually said, wow. Oh, Jesus, this is something I'm going to hold on to. Oh, Jesus, this is something I'm going to take everywhere I go. Oh, Jesus, thank you so much. Pastor spoke this morning about a heart of gratification. We have got to have that. And when we do that, we tap into the power of the gift, and we are able to become his witnesses, not only in our neighborhoods, but in our city, in our state, in our country, and in this world. That is what God has called us to do. Oh, my goodness. It, it is such, such a privilege, such a privilege. Um, I do want to say that the gift of the Holy Ghost, which many of us here have it tonight, produces the power to be witnesses. It is a gift. The promise that he will never leave us, forsake us, is in Deuteronomy 31 and 6. Hold on to that promise. Be strong and of good courage. Fear not, nor be afraid of them. For the Lord thy God, he it is that goeth with thee. He will not fail thee. He will not forsake thee. Did he fail you, sis? He did not. He was ever present. He was ready to give her healing. I believe she was healed. The promise that if we but wait on him, he shall renew our strength. We shall take up with wings as eagles. What must that gift look like all wrapped up? His angels shall take charge over us to keep us in all our ways. That's the gift of protection. The gift of his word. Psalm 107 and 20. He sent his word and healed them and delivered them from their destruction. We have a promise of healing. We have a promise of destruction. So all of those mistakes that we have made, that destruction that we have brought upon ourselves, he takes that away and delivers us from it. That is a gift. That is a promise. The gift of the blood that he shed for our loved ones the gift of his blood that he shed for the prodigals that are represented in this house tonight. We have a promise of the return of those prodigals. We not only hear about the story of the lost sheep, but he went on to talk about the lost coin, and he went on to talk about the lost son. That must be very important to him. Ezekiel 11 and 19 says, And I will give them one heart. And I will put a new spirit within you. And I will take the stony heart out of their flesh and give them a heart of flesh that they may walk in my statutes and keep mine ordinances and do them. And they shall be my people and I will be their God. That is the promise. That is the gift for our prodigals tonight. Oh, he is not slack concerning his promise. As some men count slackness. He's long-suffering to us, not willing that any should perish, but all should come to repentance. There is a gift of provision that he gives us. And I can go on and on tonight of the wonderful gifts he has for us, but I will close there. But before I close, your gifts are here waiting on you tonight. Your gifts, even if you don't feel like coming up to the altar after the close of service, they're right there. Just reach out and grab them. Don't let them go unused. Don't get to heaven. And God be standing there saying, but I had all of these for you. So please, tonight, grab a hold of those unclaimed gifts.